Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. Today, I am teaching on a subject which I have titled, Receiving Jesus Christ. Or, in other words, coming to Jesus Christ, being born again, or making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. I will talk about uh, why you need to be born again, and also how you can be born again. If you stay at the end of today's teaching, I will lead you in a prayer. A prayer that if you pray that prayer with all your heart, you can be born again this day. But before we continue, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we all agree today as touching this. I am praying for utterance that you will make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. That I will speak boldly to your people today as your own oracle. But I pray for the anointing of your spirit that is already in us. Anointing that will teach us, enlighten us, and guide us. Dear Holy Spirit of God, you are the greatest teacher. I pray that you will open the eyes, ears, heart of everyone that is listening, wherever they are listening from. from. Enlighten the eyes of their understanding. Minister to them simultaneously. Give to them what you want them to receive from today's teaching. I am just a vessel. Precious Father God, we thank you because there is no other name under heaven that is given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, because you have made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we become your own righteousness in him. Father, in all of these things, we give you praise and we give you glory. I take no glory to myself, but all glory to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, I welcome you to today's teaching. Very, very important teaching. Like I always say, every teaching is very important. So today, the topic of today's teaching, like I said, is receiving Jesus, coming to Jesus Christ, making Jesus Christ as your Lord, making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. I said in today's teaching, I will cover why you need to be born again because so many people don't know they just hear people say you must be born again they don't know why so if they don't understand it they're not going to go for it and also i'm going to teach you how to be born again and lead you in a prayer so that you can be born again today blessed be the name of the lord jesus christ before we continue i want to quickly read to you a text in romans chapter 2 verse 4 I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 2. We're going to read all the way to verse 4. Paul is writing, he says, Brethren, my heart, desire, and prayer to God for Israel is that they will be saved. He says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they have been ignorant of the righteousness of God, and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone who believes. So he's talking about ignorance here. So he's, he's, he's using Israel as an example. The reason why they're still going about their own righteousness, forsaking the righteousness of God, is because of ignorance. They're going about establishing righteousness based on their own tradition, on their own missioner, on their own understanding, the things that they came up with. And they're forsaking the righteousness that only can come from belief in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. That's the summary of what he just saying there. So ignorance is not an excuse. Because of ignorance, you can die and go to hell. Because you did not know about uh, salvation. So it's not an excuse. You will be held responsible for every decision that you made. For everything that you believe. Some believe wrongly because they have been taught wrongly. And some believe, uh, uh, do not believe because they don't care. 
They don't want to believe. They don't want to hear it in the first place. Either way, you can have a zeal, but without knowledge. And it's not going to benefit you in any way at all. So that's why Paul was writing to this uh, 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 to, 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 uh, to the Jews uh, at Rome, telling them that ignorance is not the best option. You know, because of ignorance, you can miss out on so many things. You can miss out on so many benefits of the Word of God just because you don't know. That's why it's good that we put our nose in the Word of God, that we find out what the Word of God says. So that we can lay aside all our own self-righteousnesses. We can lay aside all our own traditions. We can lay aside all our own religious beliefs that do not have a connection with the word of God. Remember Jesus Christ talking to the uh, uh, Jewish people of his own days. He said, you err, not understanding. As a matter of fact, to the Sadducees, he says, you err. Not understanding the word of God, nor the power. So, not understanding the scriptures. He says, this is the reason why you make your mistakes. Because you don't understand the scriptures. And then, he says, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Because in them, you think you have eternal life. But there are they that testify of me. But you will not come to me, so that you will have life. He says, he says our tradition... The word of God has made the word of the, the word of God, your your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. So if we go in ignorance, we will end up missing out what the word of God says. There is a reason why we teach, telling the people who never had the word of God before, so that they don't live in ignorance and miss out the best things of God and the things that are made for them. So that is why I'm teaching today's uh, uh, teaching, so that we, I will teach you, because the, the being born again is the biggest thing, as a matter of fact, is the biggest thing that any man can do for himself or for herself, to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because what does he keep you away from? Many, many times people will say, saved from what? You are asking me to be saved. Saved from what? Now, the answer to that question is save from hell, from going to hell. That's what the answer is. You can be saved from going to hell. Remember, man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. There is going to be a day when your spirit will leave your own body. When that day comes, you're going to have only two locations. The spirit of a man will have only two locations to go. Either it will go up to heaven where God is, or it will go down to hell if that person refused to make Jesus Christ his or her Lord and Savior. That soul will go to hell. That spirit will spend eternity in hell. But if the one that received Jesus Christ, that, when, the, when, when the spirit leaves the body, it goes up. It goes to be with God Almighty. So this is the reason why you got to be born again. If you are born again, then your eternity is secured. Every spirit will live forever. But the difference is, where is that spirit going to spend eternity? Is it going to be in heaven? Or is it going to be in hell? The choice is left for you to make while you are still alive. When your spirit leaves your body, it's too late. You can't make any adjustment at that point. So that is why we are saying, that's why we teach and we explain the importance of being born again. So let me give you now a brief summary of why you need to be born again. Because some people don't understand it. So I'm going to give you a brief summary now when God created Adam and Eve he gave them the commandment not to eat of certain fruit and they disobeyed God and they ate of that fruit that God commanded them not to eat and that day they committed high treason and their spirit died that day 
What does it mean by their spirit? Died that day. Their spirit, the spirit, their spirit were separated from God. So there was no more connection between them and God. Even though they were physically alive, but they were spiritually dead. And because of this, every man that was born after Adam inherited that sin nature. So we were born that way. That's why we are, we, people who are not born again are called sinners. They are called sinners not because they sinned, but because they were born that way. Adam disobeyed God, Adam and Eve, and they brought that sin nature to everyone who came to this world. In Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Romans chapter 5 verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death followed. One man committed sin, sin entered into the world, and affected everyone who comes to this world. And death followed that sin nature. What does he mean by death? Separation from God. And he says, and so death passed upon all men, for all, for that all have sinned. So, just like I said, one man sinned, but everyone got affected. So now you can see the reason the spirit of a man is now separated from God, because of what Adam did. So we inherited it from Adam. Now, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. All means all. If you're born into this world, you belong to that all. Until you do something, it will not change. You will still have that sin nature. In Romans chapter 3 verse 10, as it is written, it says, There is none righteous. No, not one. So, there is none that is righteous. In the presence of God. The word righteousness means having a good standing with God. Being able to stand in the presence of God without condemnation, without guilt, without any fear at all. That's what it means to be righteous in the presence of God. So everyone that came to Adam failed because Adam failed. And then there become a need. There comes a need. A need arises that men should be redeemed. Otherwise, they will spend eternity in the absence of God, separated from God. So, there comes a need. There comes a need that a man must be redeemed. And he has to be redeemed by man, another man, one that has no sin in him. This is why Jesus Christ came. God in his infinite mercy. Remember in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he sent his begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So God in his infinite mercy sent Jesus Christ to come and become, and he came and he became that redeemer. He became the, the, the savior, the one that saved man. So what he did was he became the propitiation. Propitiation not only for our own sin, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. So Jesus Christ came, died. All our sins were laid on him. And uh, he was raised up from the dead by the Spirit of God. When he was raised up from the dead, he satisfied the call for justice. And now he became that propitiation. The word propitiation is a, the Hebrew word is hilasterion. Hilasterion means a mercy seat. That's what Jesus Christ became for everyone. In First Corinth, in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one, the Bible says, "For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that will be made the righteousness of God in him." God made Jesus Christ to become sin. He knew no sin, but our sins were all laid upon him. He took all our infirmities, 
and he bore all our sicknesses. And then, in exchange for what he did for us, he gave us his own righteousness. Now, the righteousness which Jesus Christ gave to us becomes a free gift. You don't work for it. You don't earn it. You cannot say, I will get it by my own actions, by my, go my own good works. No. It does not work that way, my friends. That is why we call it gospel. A man died, laid his life for his own friends. And in exchange, he gave them righteousness. That you don't do anything to get that righteousness. All you have to do is believe with all your heart and receive him and what he did for you. And you will become sanctified. You become righteous in the presence of God. So now I'm going to give you scriptures just to tell you that what Jesus Christ did for us is just a gift. You cannot work for it. It is just a free gift that God has given to anyone who will believe. In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Do you see that? The gift of God is eternal life. Is eternal life in the presence of God. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible says. For by grace are you saved. Through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is a free gift. It is a gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. So you cannot boast of salvation and say, I got the salvation because of my good works. Because I have been a good person. Because I have dedicated myself and, uh, and sanctified myself to God. No. This is the reason why so many people in the church are not born again. Why? Because they are depending on their own efforts, on their own merits, on their own ability, on their own accord. For seeking what Jesus Christ did for them, they should only depend on what Christ did and receive by faith. Lay aside everything that pertains to them in terms of good works. That is how we become born again. You don't get it by your own merits. It is a free gift. All you got to do is you receive it by faith. And you say, thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now... In Romans chapter 5, verse 17, Bible says, For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Are you hearing that again? You receive the gift of righteousness. He said, They shall reign in, in this world by one Jesus Christ. So it is a free gift. You receive it. You could not save yourself. Friends, you could not save yourself. Why? Because the Bible tells us so. We couldn't. In Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, the Bible says, All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the presence of God. So, if that is the way God looks at it. He says, no one is righteous. He says, no, no one. In the presence of God, you could not be righteous. You couldn't save yourself. So you receive it as what? As a free gift. As a free gift. And once you receive what Jesus Christ did for you as a free gift, the Bible says you become a new creature. Automatically, which you will become today. When I pray with you today, you will become that new creature. Now the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that will become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when you receive the free gift of righteousness, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When God looks at you, he does not see you and your filthiness. He sees Jesus Christ. He sees the blood. He sees the mercy seat. He sees the propitiation. He sees all righteousness. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, that you put on a new, the new man, which after God is created in righteousness 
and true holiness. The new man, the new one that is now recreated, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Bible tells you is created in what? In righteousness and in true what? Holiness. Oh, that's who you are right now. If you're already born again, this scripture is talking about you. He says you will now have a new man that is now created in righteousness and in true holiness. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus Christ himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no one comes to the Father but by me. This is Jesus Christ saying this now himself. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. If you want to go to heaven, if you want to spend eternity with God, if you want to come into the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ says, he is the only way. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 12. That's what the Bible says. Now, but people are going about this on their own ways. They're going about being saved on their own ways. Why? Because of ignorance. Paul says they're going about establishing their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of their law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So people are still going around this in their own accord. Because they have not been taught properly or because of un unbelief. They have, they've had it, but they say, no, I'm not going to believe this. It is too good to be truth. That's what some people say. He says, how can I just confess the name of Jesus and have a good relationship with him and now I'm saved and now I go to heaven? How simple can that be? So they look down upon the gospel and they go about their own ways, establishing their own righteousness and they have fallen away from the only righteousness that can take them to heaven and that is the righteousness that comes from Christ Jesus. You know, the atheist. The atheist is the one who, who says, there is no God. I don't believe. There is no God. So he goes about, he does whatever he wants to do. He says, there is no God. An agnostic. An agnostic says, there may be God. There may be God. But if there be God, I don't know him. I don't know, what, I don't know where he is. You know, the, the Latin equivalent of that word is ignoramus. One without knowledge. That's what an agnostic is. So he says, if that be any God, I don't know him. So he goes about and he does whatever he want to do. He says, I might as well have fun now. Because tomorrow might be too late. Now, a pluralist, a pluralist is the one that says, all roads lead to God. We all the only difference is that we come up, we, 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 we approach it in two different ways. Our mannerism of approach is different. That's what the pluralist says. So he says, Whether you be this or you are that, as long as you call upon the name of a God, you will see God someday. Yeah. As long as you call upon the name of a God, he will lead you to a God. But not to the God who is the Father of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You cannot say, I have the Father, but I don't have Jesus. That's what the Bible says. If you don't have the Son, then you don't have the Father. But he that has the Son, he also has the Father. That's what the Bible says. So the pluralist will say, every road, all roads leads to God. That's what they will say. So they go about believing in whatever they believe and hoping that someday they will meet God. Now, there is a syncretist 
one who practice syncretism. This is the one who will miss up different gods. They will have so many different gods. You know, just like the Israelites did. They had Jehovah. Jehovah. They have Jehovah. But they went ahead and they worship uh, uh, idols. Bell. Astroth. Molak. They're gone. Different types of gods. So they mix them up together. They say perhaps one of them will save. If this one doesn't save, this one here will save. That is what the syncretizer does. And oh, oh, in their own ignorance, they offend God. And they depart from the truth, which is the only truth. The truth that Jesus Christ is their only way to heaven. Now, we have a pietist. A pietist is the one, he believes in God, all right? He believes in Jehovah, all right? He believes. But then he says, I'm going to get to him by my own merits. I'm going to do the things that are pleasing to him by my own efforts. Perhaps at the end, if the good things which I have done overweighs the bad things which I did, he's going to give me eternal rest. I'm going to rest in his own bosom. I'm going to be granted access to the kingdom of God. This is what the piety says. And so many people in the church, they fall into this category. They believe in God. That's why they go to church in the first place. They are not like, um, uh, agno they are not like um, atheists. They believe in God, all right. So they go in there. But while they are in the church, they have not submitted completely to the works of Christ. They are still depending on their own little bitty good works here and there. Uh, uh, prayers and fasting and being a member of this association or that organization, you know, this is what they believe. They say, this is what's going to uh, get us the kingdom of God. God will see all these good works that I have done, and he will grant me eternal rest. They, that is what Paul is talking about. Ignorance. Ignorance. Unpersuadableness thereof. That's what the problem is. They refuse to be persuaded that Christ is the only way. That they got to put aside every effort on their own and coming into the ticket. The ticket that is a free gift which Jesus Christ has already made available to everyone who will receive it by faith. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, remember, the Christian now, the Christian now is the one who believes in Jesus Christ. The one who has received Jesus Christ as his or as his or her Lord and Savior. Who have laid aside every personal effort and self-righteousness and now have received the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone, trusting in him alone. This is the one who has a relationship now with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who have confessed him as his or her Lord and Savior and who has oneness with him. Kononia, united, and the one that is in fellowship now with him. This one is called a Christian. This is the one who will inherit the kingdom of God. Not because they are so uh, 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 pious in their ways. It's because they have taken Jesus Christ, received him as their Lord and Savior. And because they have done that, Jesus Christ comes into their life. The Spirit of God requests their own, their own spirit. To a spirit that's never been before. And now they are able to walk in the presence of God. They are able to stand in the presence of God without any guilt, without any condemnation, without fear, but in boldness. They come doing what the scripture says. Come boldly unto the throne of, get, of, unto the throne of grace. That he will obtain mercy and find grace for help in the times of need. This one is called a Christian. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's whom you should become tonight. If you have not yet, you will become that Christian tonight. When we pray together and you receive Jesus Christ as a Lord and your Savior, you get into this ticket. One way ticket. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm getting too excited now. I don't know about you, but this is enough to make you move around and shout <laughs> and bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, 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 glory. Now, don't say that uh, 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 
Now, if you, if you if you believe, remember what Jesus Christ says. He says, if you believe that I'm not He, which means I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the Savior of the world. He says, if you believe not, you will die in your sins. Did you hear that statement? If you believe not that I am He, you will die in your sin. That is in John chapter 8 verse 24. This is what Jesus Christ says. Don't say my friend because you are hearing me right now and maybe you are still confused. Maybe you are still trying to get an understanding of what I'm saying. Don't say let me go and get my acts together and then I will come and follow Christ and be born again. Don't say that my friend. You couldn't. You cannot save yourself. Jesus Christ says, come as you are. Come, come. He that is thirsty, come drink from the fountain of life. Come as you are. And once you come in, he has the ability to give you the strength to be able to get your acts together. Can you, are you hearing that, my friends? Are you hearing that? In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1, the Bible says, and he that has no money, come you buy and eat. Come and buy and eat without money. Salvation is available right now, free of charge. For some people that I know, they like free gifts. They like things that are free. Some people that I know. A lot of people. Free stuff. And he's telling you right now that the salvation... Something that will give you eternal life in heaven. Remember, eternity means forever and ever. No end. That's what it means. Something that will give you a secure place in eternity. And he's telling you now, he said, come. Without money, buy. Take it. It's all yours. If you live too long on this earth, probably you will live 120 years. That will come very fast. Are you going to rely every day you get up, eating the bread of anxious toil? You go to work, you come back. You do this, you do that. You try to secure this, you build a house. You, 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 you buy some cars. You establish some businesses. Every day going out and coming in, you're doing the same. But you have you have not paid attention. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have not paid attention on the thing that will be forever and ever. You have not even thought about it. The thing that you do right now will pass away. All of them. Before you know it, it will all be gone. Do you know anybody who is from 16th century right now? Do you have an idea of anyone who is from there who is still alive right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you know, let me know. <laughs> none. The answer is none. They are all gone. Where did they go? They did not go forever. Even though their bodies were buried in their graves, the spirit went on. Either up to heaven or down into hell. So, the time is very short. You don't want to waste too much time. You don't want to postpone it any longer and say, I will get born again when the time comes, if it's the will of God. No, no. The Bible says, the day, that day that you hear, you, you hear his voice. He says, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart because of unbelief. Receive him. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will sup with him and him with me. And so he's telling you here that it's a, a decision that you got to make, personal decision. It's not anyone who's going to make it for you. Mama is not going to do it. Papa, No. Your friends, your relatives, they will not be able to make this decision for you. 
You are the one who's going to make this bold decision for yourself. Remember, God does not have grandchildren. He has only children. You cannot go in that or mama or go tell. No. He cannot come for yourself. You got to make decisions for yourself. He's given you the ability to make choices for yourself. And the choice which you made here on the earth is going to be what determines where you go when you finish your life here on the earth. So think about the future. Don't be in a small box. Confined in this world here that in a twinkle of an eye will be over. Think about the future. Think about the future. So that you will, you, you will know that this is what God wants you to do. Someone will say, but why has Jesus not come back yet? Why is the world still going on? We've been talking about the end of the time and Jesus coming back soon. It has never happened. Remember the Bible tells us that God is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. But it's long suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That is why he is patient enough, giving you all the time, so that you can come into the kingdom of God. He is waiting for the early and the latter rain, before he will gather the harvest together. That's what God is waiting for. So don't take it for granted. Don't boast about tomorrow. For you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Don't say tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. You have no clue. Friends, it is estimated that about 155,000 people die every day in this world. Every day. 150 something thousand people or more die every day. Where do they go? Once the time comes and the person leaves, they cannot come back here again. That spirit goes on. Where do they go? The choice they make here will determine where they will go. If they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if they are born again, if they are Christians, they will go up. Their future is guaranteed, secured. Secured. But if they refuse that and rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will go to hell and spend eternity there where there is torment, darkness, where there will be a lake burning with fire and brimstone. Oh, what an unpleasant place to spend eternity in. He don't want to go that route. That is why we are teaching the gospel. We are preaching the gospel. We are telling you this good news so that you don't go that route. Are you hearing me, my friends? David, speaking to Jonathan, says... There is only but a step between me and death. One step, he says. Between me and death. That ought to be the same for everyone. But you can change that language and say, There is only but a step between me and everlasting life. And that step is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If I will receive him today, I have eternal life. If I will receive him today, I have eternity with God. Are you having me, my friend? There is only one step. That step is you who's going to make the decision. Nor anybody else, who, nobody else can make that for you. Let it be your decision today, friends. In John chapter 3, verse 36, the Bible says, he that believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he that believes not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Did you hear that? He that believes in the Son of God has everlasting life. Now, he that believes not, he says the wrath of God will abide in him. This is my I write to you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you will know that you have eternal life. John is writing. So he is giving you the guarantee that you know right now. You're not going to be doubting or you're going you're gonna to be skeptical and say, I don't know where I'm going to go when I die. He says, this is not right to you who believe in the Son of God that you will know right now that you have eternal life. 
You know your destination. When you are a Christian, you should not be scared of death. Why? Death is only but a, trans a transition. A departure of the spirit from the body. Into a place of glory. That's what it is. But you don't want to go there very soon, friends. We are all here for the purpose. There is some. There is a reason why you are here. You see, we are all called to be witnesses and ministers of Christ. We are all called to do the same. You may not be in the fivefold ministry. You may not be a prophet or an apostle or a teacher. You may not. But we all have given this uh, ministry of reconciliation. To go out and tell the untold. To preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To bring souls into the kingdom of God. This is being a soul winner. It ought to be your own priority if you are a Christian. Because that is the reason why you are here. You don't want to be the only one to go to heaven. You want to go along with some people. With you. You want somebody in heaven someday to shake your hand and say, Brother, sister, thank you so much. Because of the word of Jesus that you brought to me, I am here today. Remember the Bible says, Those that turn many to righteousness... They will shine like the stars. That is a reward. That will be given to everyone. According to what you've done in the body. In the body of Christ. That's going to be when we stand in the judgment seat of Christ. Are you hearing me? That be my seat of Christ. That's going to be a reward. Dish out. Because of what we have done for Christ. Remember. Bible says. He says. Desire not that meat which perishes. Remember? He says, labor not for the meat that perishes. But eh, the meat, but endure in the meat, the everlasting meat. The one, the meat that endures forever. He says, which the Son of Man shall give you. Labor not for the meat which perishes. But for that meat which endures unto everlasting life. Which the Son of Man shall give unto you. Do not waste your time in the things that will pass away. Labor therefore in the meat which will get, in, get you into everlasting life. Whatever you're going to do for the kingdom of God, do it right now. The time is very short. Jesus is coming back very soon. When the rapture of the church happens, are you going to be one of those that will be raptured? Or do you want to spend another 70 years on earth going through tribulation? If you read the book of Revelation, it's not a place to be. That God will pour out his judgment upon the earth. Balls of judgment. Vows of judgment. You don't want to go through that route, my friend. That is why it's very important. When you hear this message, don't postpone it any longer. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Jeremiah is writing. He says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out systems. Hewed them out systems. Broken systems that can hold no water. This is, this is what God is telling the Israelites to the prophet Jeremiah. He says, my people have committed two evils. First of all, they have forsaken me, the fountain of life. And they have hewed them out. Systems. Broken systems that can hold no water. I don't know if you understand what he's saying here. But it's, it's figurative to the Jews. How they let go the commandments of God. How they went away from God. Committed spiritual idolatry. They committed spiritual adultery. Went after other gods. And they left the fountain of the living water. 
And these other gods that they went after, the Bible described them as systems. Broken systems that cannot hold water. You know what systems are? They are reservoirs. You know, they, you, you hew them out of rocks. A place where when the rain, rain, after raining, it will collect water there. And you can store the water there. Uh, so that uh, when there is no rain, you can have uh, extra or reservoir of water somewhere. Those are systems. But sometimes when they heal them, they think everything is all right. Not knowing that there is a fracture somewhere. And after the rain, they are very, very confident they have storage of water somewhere. Only to go in there and find out that it's completely empty and broken. It could not hold the water because there was a fracture somewhere and every water leaked away. That's what he's saying here. He says, Israel, they did not commit to God. They left God's commandment. And they went after other gods. The same thing applies to you today. As you are hearing this message, if you would not come back, if you will not receive the fountain of life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and you are going about other gods, other religious beliefs. You're going about your own self-righteousness, which is a broken system. Oh, you'll be so disappointed that none of these things will help you. So as you hear today, listen. Is there no balm at Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughters of my people not recovered? Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22. Remember that in Gilead, Gilead is a place uh, um, east, east of River Jordan, which is modern day Jordan. No, they have trees there, trees. These trees, are uh, they will harvest or they will extract their resins and they will make balm out of it. This balm, they will use it to uh, uh, heal wounds. They place them on top of wounds and they will heal the wounds. And he says, in this place of Gilead, is there no balm there? Are there no physicians there who will administer this balm to heal the wounds? And he says, but why? Why is the health of my, the daughters of my people not restored? Why? Because they refuse treatment. The, the balm is there. The, the healing is there. But they said no. This is figurative of Israel. Remember the southern part of Israel, which is uh, 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 which, which is um, Judah, which is Judah and uh, Benjamin. They saw the northern part went into captivity to 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 to, to Syria. They were taken by the Syrian, and they saw that in even in their own flesh. And Jeremiah he came to warn them. Then the the, the, the southerners. Telling them they, they got to repent. They've seen what happened over there. That is the time for them to turn around. To repent. To come back to God. To let go of their idolatry. The worship of idols. To let go of their sins. That danger is coming. The Babylonians are coming. They're going to come and take you to captivity. And destroy the whole place. Jeremiah was warning them ahead of time. He warned them. He warned them. But they will not listen. They will not listen until Babylon came in the year oh, 586 BC. Destroyed the whole place. Burned down the temple of God and took them into captivity. This is what he's telling you today. Is there no balm at Gilead? Are there no physicians there? Is salvation not available to you today? Is Christ not present today? So why do you want to let yourself go into destruction? Why wouldn't you take salvation today? Why would you resist healing just like the Israelites did and went into captivity in Babylon? That's what he's talking about here. So friends, now is the time for me to lead you into to that in, in that prayer, prayer of salvation. 
If you will pray this prayer with me right now, right now, right now, not tomorrow, right now. <laughs> you see, we don't like procrastination in the kingdom of God. <laughs> we are doers of the word of God. We do for now. That is why Jesus Christ likened it to uh, the man who is wise. He said that one is the one who built on the solid foundation. The one who hears and do. He says he's likened to the man who builds his own house on a solid foundation. When the rain comes, when the wind comes, and every other thing comes against it, he will stand firm forever. But the one who will hear the word of God and don't do it, he likened that one unto the man who will build his house on, on the sand. When the rain came, and the wind came, and blew upon it, it was disaster. <laughs> the house was the house went down completely. So that's what Jesus Christ is saying. So now is the time of salvation. Today is accepted time. No longer will you postpone it. Today you can be born again. And that's what's going to happen now. Friends, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. Pray this prayer with all your heart. Believe it in all your heart. Make that decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. No going back again. Lay everything on Him. Depend only on Him as your own Lord and Savior. Begin a brand new relationship with Him. And your life, your dead spirit that was alienated from God will be recreated this very minute. And you will now become a child of God. You will now become a saint of God. A righteousness of God. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son, that he died for my sins, that you raised him up from the dead on the third day. Dear Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I believe now that I am born again, that I am a child of God, that I have the kingdom of God. I am accepted into the kingdom of God. My sins are all washed away in the precious blood of the Lamb. I believe that my name is written in the book, in the Lamb's book of life. But I give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, Baruch Hashem Adonai. If you pray that prayer, I will come into the kingdom of God. You are now a Christian, a child of God. Remember also there is a subsequent experience. After salvation, we call it the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The endowment of power for, for service. I, if you go to my iCarve on YouTube, it's Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. I have so many teachings there that will help you in your Christian work. But there is a particular teaching there called Speaking in Tongues is for Every Believer. It will help you. It will teach you. It will guide you on what how you will be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with all the tongues. And um, I want to use this opportunity to thank all our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to other people at no cost to them. If you want to become a member, if you want to become a partner, one that will help us financially, to spread the gospel to other people. Please visit our website www.kuim.org and there is a donation button there where you can securely give. Remember, Jesus Christ says, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the prophet's reward. However you help the kingdom of God prosper, advance the kingdom of God, the reward is there for you. Remember, now you were a baby Christian because you got just born again. Find a good church where they teach the word of God, become a member. Get a Bible, the word of God. Put your nose in it. Remember, you need to grow. And faith will come by hearing the word of God. Don't let Satan take advantage of you. Do not backslide. It's not an option 
for any Christian. But grow every day. Peter says, desire the sincere make of the word of God that you may grow thereby. So desire that milk of the word of God. Remember, it's only those who hear the word of God and put them in practice, like I said earlier, they are the ones who reap the benefits of the word of God. Surely there is an end and your own expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ki kalaman. Sala Angra, this is